Hi, brothers and sisters. Jerry O'Donnell here with Four Angels Messages once again. The title of this message is Babylon is More Than Confusion. And this is part four. In several of these messages, we have taken a look at certain things up until the point in which we as Seventh-day Adventists ought to, ought to know the rest of the story. For instance, I believe in the third message, we went right up to the statue, but we didn't go through the details of the statue because it's not the focus. Now with this message, we're going to look again at Daniel in this case about his steadfastness. And many of us know what happened with Daniel regarding the lion's den, but we are not going to focus on that. And we're going to cut it off right before there. The focus is again on the character in which we need to develop so that we can stand as a survivor through the time of Babylon, which we live in right now. So before we get started, let's take a moment in prayer. Our Father, thank you so very much for this opportunity to spend in thy word. Help us, I pray, to understand what we're about to read, about to study. And I pray that we would be sanctified through this process as thy word is truth. And the truth is what's supposed to sanctify us, preparing us as a people to meet thee. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. This message is based on a couple verses, more than one, out of Peter. So the first one we're going to read is out of 2 Peter. Let's go there. 2 Peter chapter 3. And let's look here in 2 Peter chapter 3 at verse 17. 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 17 says, Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest you also being led away with error of the wicked fall from your own steadfastness. So the character trait that we're going to focus on is having steadfastness. We live in such a wicked time. And I have to admit, uh, Ellen White warned us that things are going to happen rapidly at the very end. And for those that keep one eye on the news, not a whole lot of news, because our focus is actually on sharing the gospel. That's where our attention should be. But one cannot just live in a cave and be oblivious to what's going on. It seems that to destroy this world, um, talk about the agenda, that, that there's, there's this agenda and it's a conspiracy theory and all that. Folks, we are so far into the agenda, there is no recovering from it. It is a purposeful destruction of not only the United States, but all nations to bring us under the one authority that it's leading up to. All of this is being planned so that there be basically one governance. And we know that that turns out to be none other than the beast. What I don't understand is why they are working so hard to achieve this when it's going to all come crumbling down in a matter of weeks. Once the power is recognized, according to Revelation, it's only for, I think, 15 days um, that, the, that they give power unto the beast for, what is it, an hour, which comes out to be 1 24th of a period of time, which is basically 15 days. Anyways, I digress. 
let's take a look now at the other verse that this is based on this message is first Peter chapter 5 let's go there first Peter chapter 5 and here in first Peter chapter 5 we're going to look at verse 9 first Peter chapter 5 and again we're going to focus on the character trait of steadfastness verse 9 so first Peter chapter 5 verse 9 says whom resist steadfastness in the faith knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brother that are in the world there are other people suffering the first verse was about you know the history you know how only a few people stood up against the wickedness and it goes from Abel standing up to Cain Noah standing up against the whole world and moving all the way through to the present moment we should learn the lesson and stand up and not go along with wickedness in other words be steadfast here we see that we should take encouragement knowing that there are other people that are struggling just like you and we are to be steadfast in the faith despite the world trying to cause us to give it all up that's the goal right now it's all mental uh, with a measure of some physical constraints if you would eventually it's going to get more physical here remember according to Revelation chapter 13 you don't go along with everything like setting up the image and bowing down to it meaning that you agree with it that you're subject to it um, if you don't do that you are marked to be killed so now that is the basis for where we are at as far as what we're going to focus on in this message and we get a great example of the steadfast the person that will stick to the call of faith call of duty and he is found in Daniel chapter 6 and it just so happens that he is Daniel so let's go there Daniel chapter 6 and we're going to spend the rest of our time there in Daniel chapter 6 and again to remind you that the focus is not on the lions not at all what this is going to focus on is everything that leads up to that position and that you know you might know the story very well but as we read each verse I'll be pausing and as in usual fashion pulling out such detail that mimic today's world for instance in Daniel chapter 6 we have in verse 1 it says it pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 princes which should be over the whole kingdom and over these three presidents of whom Daniel was first and the princes might give account unto them and the king should have no damage so what we have here is uh, sub governments to the to the king and uh, Daniel as well as a, a couple others are now the presidents over these and of course um, well there's gonna be jealousy coming along here in ju just a moment but in there's something that's going to thrust us as Seventh-day Adventists forward that is going to cause us to be a people that will be known by their names right now I don't know if you know this but uh, when you go door to door or pass out literature one of the popular questions happen to be are you Mormon are you a Jehovah Witness they got us confused with that and when I tell people no I'm a Seventh-day Adventist and they still say you're a what they don't recognize the name but once we're promoted in society as a recognized name and what we stand for 
there's going to be a whole lot of jealousy happening. Let's continue on. Verse 3 says, Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and the princes, because an excellent spirit was in him, and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. And, well, that can contribute to jealousy, but let's not focus so much on that, but rather focus on Daniel having an excellent spirit. Can the same be said of us individually? Do we individually have an excellent spirit as well? Are we? Re do we have the character of Christ is the short statement here. If we do not have the character of Christ, it doesn't matter of how much of the truth we know. If we don't represent the character of Christ to this world, it, it, it's a tinkling symbol. You know, 1 Corinthians 13 that we're supposed to be reading every day. It's Ellen White's encouragement to do so. We need to be very careful in our relationship with, with the world. It's not all about keeping ourselves in uh, uh, proper obedience to God. But we have to also have that drawing character that Christ had. He, Christ did not participate in sin, yet sinners were drawn to him. Are we too standoffish uh, to be approached? Do we make ourselves to uh, appear to be unapproachable? That's not always an, a necessarily good thing. And our goal in this world is not only to be right with God so that, well, we're in the kingdom, but to try and gather as many as possible, you know, in, into God's kingdom as well. Many go, uh, don't understand that sanctification is the work of a lifetime. And so when you have somebody completely in the world, to tell them, here's the end point of what you need to reach to, um, and then keep growing after that yet, there's a lot of growth in between. And we have a choking ability that we place on those that are just coming fresh out of the world. There's not enough patience with them. Even Jesus Christ himself had said that, you know, there's much more I would like to tell you, but you can't handle it right now. That's the approach we should have with those fresh out of the world. I'm not talking about the people that are attending church and have been there for five years and they're still wearing jewelry and, and stuff like that. That's, that's a different story. That is not sanctification of the work of a lifetime. That's just pure laziness and ignorance and protectionism that the pastors have placed on uh, the church members and so forth. This whole nonsense of... Uh, you know, we have some new members come into church and they're going to wear jewelry and, um, you know, back off and, and stuff like that. Well, church is for the perfecting of the saints. If you're telling me that uh, you as a pastor did not prepare them ahead of time that, well, Seventh-day Adventists don't wear jewelry, that's on you. That's not on the membership. Uh and I've experienced this myself. Uh, um, you know, I'm not making anything up, in other words. So, back to the point here. We want to copy in the time of Babylon, which we live in, is that an excellent spirit, that we're approachable. That even to the point where, you know, if someone was looking for a Bible answer, they could call on us. Let's go to verse 4 now. Then the presidents and the princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could not find one occasion nor fault. And I want to pause there. In all we do, do we do it without fault as well? You know, if you're employed by somebody else and you go to work and you uh, put in a day's work, do you go along with everybody else in the, you know, if they have... Uh, uh, conversation around the water cooler. You know, a lot of people are still remote, but my point is, is that 
how we conduct ourselves in the office, cut time, extended lunches, lazy at work, all of that fellow employees do see. I'm not saying that it should be in their face that we're not at fault, but we should have no fault when it comes to giving our employers, even if we don't like the job, our best effort. We need to think on, on that. So for as much, and this is all character that we ought to have during this time of Babylon for salvation's sake alone. For as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. And that error doesn't mean that uh, Daniel was without uh, making a mistake. If he made a mistake, he would correct it. Uh, he did not err from the, the laws of the land, in other words. They could not find anything that uh, he was living in disobedience to, that they could say, aha, this is, uh, this is something we have on Daniel and take it before the king. You know, you think Daniel is so good and wonderful and obedient. Well, guess what, king? They couldn't find anything. Verse 5 says, then said these men, we shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of God. And this is why the last great battle that we are going to experience is against the Ten Commandments. The world has been set up thinking that Sunday is the proper Christian um day to worship, to keep holy, and that's what's going to be the final straw. We're going to be able to point in the Bible and says the seventh day is holy unto the Lord, not the first day of the week. That is what is going to be the contention, and that's going to get directly go against our God. You see, the issue is not that, oh, Sunday law is here. Oh, don't, don't, don't receive the uh, uh, mark of the beast. Don't accept Sunday and all, all that. That's one aspect of it. The other aspect is when you give up the Sabbath to keep Sunday instead, and that's when you receive the mark of the beast. You know, as Seventh-day Adventists, if you do not cut your grass on Sunday, you don't go and trim the bushes on Sunday, you don't go to the grocery store on Sunday, you're not accepting the mark of the beast. In fact, Ellen White says what we should be doing during that time is uh, other things that they can't necessarily point a finger at, you know, prepare sermons, uh, hold Bible studies, there's a lot of other work that we can do instead. We don't have to be in their face as far as going against the law of the land. But at some point, they're going to say, we can't get those Seventh-day Adventists. Hmm, what do we do now? Ah, we'll make it illegal to actually keep the Seventh-day Sabbath. I don't know how that looks. I don't know at what point it comes in. All I know is that they are not going to be satisfied that everybody rests on Sunday. They are going to force labor on the seventh day. Then these presidents and princes assembled together to the king and said un, uh, thus unto him, King Darius, live forever. Verse 7 says, all the presidents of the kingdom, the governors, and the princes, and the counselors, and the captains have consulted together to establish a royal statue and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any god or any man for thirty days, save of thee, O king, he shall be cast in the den of lions. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing that it be not changed according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which alter not. Okay, I want to pause there. 
I don't care if in this country that you're Republican or Democrat. First off, you shouldn't be either. Um, and basically, both parties are all about making sure that they are taken care of. All politicians basically are out for themselves. They like, let's put it this way, the salary that these people make is insufficient to carry on the lifestyle that they lead. Therefore, they're making money off on the side of which the average person doesn't have that kind of insight. Um, look at, for instance, Nancy Pelosi. I mean, there is absolutely no way that you could afford that type of lifestyle. I mean, Trump, of course, has a, a very wealthy lifestyle, but he had a lot of wealth to begin with. But the Republicans are not out of um, excuse for that either. Uh, I'm trying to think of the one Republican that, uh, is it Romney, I believe, that has dealings with Ukraine, that they benefit off of what's happening with the Ukraine. And, and so what we have here is that we're going to see carelessly and kind of uh, are experiencing that laws that are very careless that benefit the wealthy politicians talk about an elite group right across the board they make up all these laws and don't care the consequence of us who are basically slave laboring um I was just shocked that uh, in approximately nine days from now, May 1st, by executive order, all of a sudden, uh, those that with high credit scores are supposed to, when they buy and sell a home, all of a sudden, their new mortgage payment is going to be, on average, costing an extra $40 to help ensure against those that um, are not so wealthy, that have not the, the great credit score, uh, bad credit pretty much, and they're supposed to offset that bad credit through this extra penalty, if you would. This is not a pick on Biden, the Democrats, but all the politicians. And I say all, because where are the Republicans yelling that you cannot do this? Do you realize an executive order does not carry that much power? If that were the case, we might as well just get rid of Congress. That you could just make up any law and say, well, I executive order it because I know I can't get it through Congress. That was never in the Constitution whatsoever. The purpose of an executive order is that any law or command of that sort can be just simply executive ordered for the federal government. In other words, yeah, Joe Biden, you're responsible for all the federal employees. And if you want to uh, executive order that all of a sudden June 19th is now a, a holiday and don't want to go through Congress to make it official, yeah, just don't make everybody else keep June 19th as a holiday. You, as executive orders, that is for the federal government, federal employees, possibly federal contractors. It was never made to replace Congress, and yet it's allowed. And that's why I said, don't think you're safe voting for Republicans or something like that. They do not have your back. That's a false um, position to take. Every human to be dependent upon, um, that statement itself is an error because it's getting to the point where our only trust will be in God. 
even in our own families, cannot be trusted. So with that in mind, the parallel we see here is that laws are carelessly just being enacted without regard to the consequences thereof. I mean, the already the, for instance, on that one, the housing market's already tanking. With the high interest rates, over double from when I got my mortgage, um, one would be hesitant in wanting to move. And now, if you had excellent credit so you could get the lowest interest rate, but you have to pay a penalty because you're uh, subsidizing those that don't have good credit, that's a bunch of nonsense. Personally, if I was uh, part of the uh, mortgage companies uh, collective, I'd start suing on, on this fact because it just made the whole housing market go even, or it's going to, that is, have a negative effect. Who wants to take on a new mortgage when you're going to be paying an extra 40 bucks a month? Just because. You did all that was right. You had this excellent credit. Uh, you made sure you didn't default on your own loans, and now you're penalized. It's the it's penalized across the board, not just in the mortgage. There's others, other things that are happening. That's what I'm talking about. We are here. We are in the time in which decrees, laws, are being enacted without concern for the consequences thereof. And so in verse 9, where it says, wherefore King Darius signed the writing of the decree, he was thinking, wow, uh, look what I get out of this deal. Look what the current administration gets out of this new deal. Look what um, uh, Congress gets out of this new deal. They're all in bed together, as they say. Verse 10. It's just a TV show, by the way. I don't know if you know this, but politics reported by the news. It's just one giant drama TV show. That's all it is. This whole thing playing out. No wonder Ellen White tells us not to get involved with it. The only time we're supposed to vote is for referendum purposes, questionnaires, but we are not to be backing any party or any person, no matter what they stand for, no matter what good they say they will do. And no, I'm not even talking about, yeah, I know politicians don't keep their word. No, I'm not even talking that. Let's say they do keep their word. But not everything they go to do is approved of God. Verse 10 says, Now when Daniel knew th that the writing was signed, he went into his house, and his windows being open, and his chambers towards Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day, and prayed and gave thanks before his God, as he did aforetime. This is where the steadfastness has come in. He is not going to change because of the careless decree that was just signed. And that is is what we need. This is the focal point. That is what we need part of our character as well. So the excellent in spirit is, is another one, but this is the high point in which when they say you can no longer keep the Sabbath, we do not shrink from keeping the Sabbath. We are to be steadfast and march forward and not follow the decree. Verse 11 says, Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. Then they came near and spake before the king concerning the king's decree. Hast thou not signed a decree that every man that shall ask a petition of any God or any man within thirty days, save thee, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions. 
The king answered and said, The thing is true according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which alter not. Then answered they, this is verse 13, and said before the king, That Daniel, which is of the children of the captivity of Judah, regarded not thee, O king, nor the decree that thou hast signed, but maketh a, his petition three times a day. Three times he broke that decree in just one day. And I want to pause there. Yeah, for those that live close to neighbors, the neighbors may observe certain things and turn you in. There may be patrols. I know where I'm at. We have helicopters quite often getting close to the ground looking for for things. We have satellites as well. We are so policed that it's going to be very easy for them to catch us in either breaking Sunday law or following the Sabbath. I know of some people that are so paranoid that they won't send a text message, an email that contains anything that could potentially be used against them. Folks, stop living in a, par a paranoid world. If you have one of those devices, even the simple doorbell, um, but smart anything, the, uh, any device that is listening, and by the way, your cell phone listens, um, it's a done deal. They, All these electronic devices that were pushed onto us as, look how wonderful life can be. And they usually use some type of heart string pulling that gets you to be involved, where this lonely old man, stubborn in his ways, his son gives him an uh, Alexis, and after the son is done doing all kinds of things, visiting, cleaning up, and stuff like that, taking care of his, his, his uh, elderly father, wonderful thing to do, he leaves, and a period of time transpires, and when the son is in, uh, in the process of coming back for a visit, the father says, Alexa, play that certain tune. And she does. And when the son comes walking in, thinking that his father, you know, he's just a bump on a log, all of a sudden, there's joy in the room and they're happy that they can converse on something that, uh, some type of technology Folks, technology companies are not dumb. They get you hooked, and then they turn around and control what devices, uh, through the devices you've bought, thinking that everything was okay. All the smart devices can be turned against you. Alexa, turn... Make a cooler in, in this in this room. Uh, it's not cooler, Alexa. What's happening? You have you may not go below a um, a certain cooling limit. It does not help the climate. What? Alexa, I'm I'm a bit cold. Can you turn up the heat? No, sir. You have exceeded the allowable limit on um, the temperature in this room. And it's not just heat and cooling. There's water controls, other electric devices. You know, Alexa, why did my TV turn off? You have used too much electricity for this day. Uh, I mean, the controls are, are right there before our eyes. And people got uh, tricked into having their entire house being controlled. Who thought... That, uh, for instance, a person buying one of those uh, doorbells that has, has a camera on it, that it would actually be used against them. They're being spied on. And whenever they work in the front yard, 
they're being watched and it's all over the internet. It's being collected. So any activity done before a simple doorbell with a camera is now able to be used against them. So be very careful. Be very careful. Again, we don't need humans to turn us in. Our own electronic devices will. Even simple conversations uh, on our devices uh, in front of any device, as long as it can connect to the internet, um, it's, it's listening. I mean, I have, through a previous employer, or a, actually I was working with a, a contract, a, a, um, uh, yeah, iPhone was given to me. I never bothered uh, connecting it to uh, to any telephone company. And in fact, it says that it's a, a Verizon phone. Um, never got service for it, but it's connected to the internet, of which I need for even my current employment. No doubt Siri is probably uh, recording something. Any, anything, uh, with a camera, a microphone, it's all still being recorded, even if it's not physically turned, turned on. I mean, right now I see that this camera is turned on because there's a little light there. But who knows what else there uh, is able to be watched while the light's not on. And I'm not being panicky. I'm not doing conspiracy theory. This is admitted stuff. This is absolutely admitted by the technology companies that say, yeah, we at any time we can listen on to a conversation and uh, with cameras, watch whatever. Many people will put caps over their uh, computers that have cameras uh, just so that uh, they're assured that nothing is being covered, uh, recorded. We live in such an age in which there's no escaping the technology at this point. Yeah, I could get rid of all these devices, but there goes the ministry as well. And I feel that we need to take advantage of, of it. And I leave the consequences with God. And there's no paranoia here, but that doesn't mean I'm careless and buy smart this, that, and the other thing that my entire house is uh, a clap on, clap off type thing. Um, I just won't, won't allow that. All right. Back to the last few scriptures here. We have about four more to read. Verse 14 says, Then the king, when he heard these words, was sore displeased of, with himself and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him... And he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. Then these men assembled unto the king and said unto the king, O king, that the law of the Medes and Persians, that no decree nor statute which the king established may be changed. And that's what we're going to face as well. That once they enact these, who cares about the consequence type laws, they're not going to pull those back. And we are going to suffer for the ramifications thereof. I'm not worried about it. It's not happening today. Jesus said, there's enough evil today, let alone borrowing it for the future. But we should be aware that these things are going to be. Verse 16, then the king commanded that they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake and said to Daniel, thy God whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. And a stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet and with the signet of his lords, and they purposed, the purpose might not be changed concerning Daniel. So there was no freeing him. And um, as we know, that it will get to a point that for our faith, we will be put into prison, uh, forgotten about, in fact, when Jesus comes, prison doors shall be open. Uh, those that were forgotten will be able to come forth. 
and um, it'll be a glorious day of that release that the great Redeemer has come to take us home. Let's keep our eyes focused on that. Let's do go about and doing the Lord's work. Be steadfast in what we believe. And yes, be specifically steadfast as far as keeping the Sabbath. Let's practice keeping it holy this day and every Sabbath here on. Thank you. Let's pray. Our Father, thank you so very much for Daniel's example of being steadfast. May we be just as steadfast as well in all that we believe and do and represent of thee. Help our characters to be right, even approachable, and uh, may we have a reason for our hope to be able to give to anyone that asks a question. And I pray that overall, each and every day, that we are becoming the people you would have us to be, even to be able to stand in that day. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless and take care.